You okay there? To me? Yeah, it doesn't sound like you're going through the mic. Oh. <laughs> I was like, why does it sound so far away? All right, hopefully it stays there. <laughs> I was like, why does he sound so far away? Oh, it looks at the picture. Yes, Bump. Yeah, so far. <laughs> Look, man, just because your morning wood fell down doesn't mean you can just, you know. It's very common in Wolverines. <laughs> Welcome back everybody to another episode of Vita Episode 323 three, three, no 232 no 34 uh brain fart. Uh 232, I think it is. Uh 1010010. <laughs> Something like that. Uh you get me and you get a half awake Alex. I'm like 70%. <laughs> no, we can hear it in your voice, don't you worry. No, not enough coffee in the morning. Back. No, I think it's actually more of allergies. It's the temperature's changing, so my immune system's just going, uh, I hate you. Wouldn't know what that is. Mm. <laughs> but we got a pretty short episode if everything goes according to plan. A couple of things to talk about, and then you guys should be on our way. So, ready? E. E. All right, cool. Oh, yes, package for Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Ah, Mr. Top Deck Heroes, package. Man, another one? What is with this guy? Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Again. Oh, it again. Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Oh, package. Oh, God. Thank you. That's heavy. What's in that one? Oh, it's training cards. Cards? Was every one of them cards? Yeah. How can you afford that? Oh, that's interesting you say that. I got, I got it from this place. Secret. Yeah. Man, these people are crazy. It's no secret. 50 cards. Use code TDHEROES for a discount. Turn us off. Tuesday stream right away because there was no actual big impactful reveals happening throughout Cards of the Days. And we just jump straight into the Tuesday stream, showing us some morally ill support, but this time for the Keter version. Huzzah. Huzzah. So, first one we've got is a apparently a double rare to cover. Or did I do this in the correct order? I want to say I did this in the correct order. Apparently I did this in the correct order. No, I didn't do this in the correct order. There we go. First one to cover is actually a common. Uh, and it's Swordsman of Twin Stands Ister. It's a grade one that honestly should be more than a comment in my opinion, because it says auto back row rear guard. When your other when your rear guard in the same column as this unit is bound by the ability of your grade three or grade of anger Leal in its card name, stand this unit. Yeah, it, it's it's this is probably could have been a rare or higher. Um Youth Burke had a uh, similar card that boosted only the Vanguard, and it was double rare. True. Like I feel like yeah, I feel like this has so many implications. It's not only just a continuous booster in the sense of you boost with one thing, that thing gets bound, Liel calls another copy of the thing she bound. So now you have basically the same column reset, but potentially bigger power depending on what cards you call. But this also lets you put triggers like draw triggers and crit trigger power and heal trigger powers on this. So that whatever you call or no, other way around. I I've honestly forgotten how Liel plays. Hold up. <laughs> The L attack on, on attack, retire or bind a card and then get the card with the same name from your deck and call it the rear guard. Well, my point still stands of putting the trigger power on the booster because if you activate yeah. divine skill, you get to do it again, which means you gain you keep the power from the trigger on the second swing. Make sense? No, no, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you'll get three, three boosts out of it instead of just two. Yeah, exactly. On the divine turn. Yeah. Yeah. Which honestly is just still good. Yeah. Simple, straightforward. Alex, what, what are we else we got? Next, we got the double rare that Philip teased uh, earlier. Uh, Knight of Piercing Skies, uh, Pernasitira? Pernasitira? Pernasitira. Anyways, 
Anyways, the great to uh, continue to regard during your turn if your bind zone has a card with the same card name as this unit gains power plus five, making it a 15. And then auto rear guard uh, when your grade three or greater vanguard with Leo and his card name is placed. Cost energy blast three, bind this unit and draw a card. I'm iffy on this one. I'm a little bit iffy on this one. Um, So you get a draw if you really need it uh on your vanguard place so i guess if you persona ride you can draw and draw on another one but you're losing a unit that you can use for the vanguard skill to call more cards because what the uh, what the people in my ear were screaming uh is the fact that you can potentially put this in the early game have some early game rush potential in the sense of just you know units on board and then when you ride up into grade three it binds itself draws you a card and now at the end of your first grade three turn you have two cards in bind zone to use Liel's perfect guard ability. I can see it. I can see it. I do like one more implication of this in the sense of divine skill turn, because I'm also thinking mm -hmm. of that aspect, aspect is with the restander we just talked about, it, there's not much mm -hmm. like if you have the restander, this combo is not going to work. But if you don't have the restander, there's a potential to go swing with this. Let's say it's a 15K or 25. It's a persona right turn, whatever. Decent number. You swing with the other column then you attack with vanguard bind the other column i'm trying to complicate this what i'm trying to do is basically on the second re-ride you can bind whatever is in the front row and call it to the other side where this used to be on and have another mm. booster if you need another booster mm. otherwise it's why it's a fun card uh fun times fun times fun times but of course leo didn't just get a double rare she also got a triple rare in sequence wizard uh e. it's a grade two triple rare that says auto when this unit is placed on rear guard during your main phase if you have a grade three good of anger leo in its card name cannibal plus one look at the top five cards of your deck choose up to one grade three or less unit card from and call it to rear guard and shuffle the deck and auto rear guard when your other unit is bound by your vanguard's ability this unit gets power five until the end of turn you may soul charge one. This is not a once per turn auto ability. So on a divine turn, this can gain 10k power and potentially soul charge two. Yeah. I can't soul remember is soul is an important It is an issue. So I remember distinctly soul being an issue. Well, that's good then. It is. I don't know how I feel about the counter blast cost because I do also remember counter blast being a potential issue. Well, the thing about the counter blasting is only this one's placed on main phase. So it's not like in your battle phase, you can call more of these and gain more of the ability. Well, yeah, but it's also one of those cards that it's like, it's a cannabis one to put something on board off of top five, which is honestly a really good ability because if you don't have certain pieces in your hand, you can potentially dig for them or just not minus hand at all to make a board. So in that aspect, it's mm -hmm. a good card, but Liel counter blasts, uh, this counter blasts, if I remember correctly, Liel's personal booster is a soul blast. Uh, mm. I don't remember, honestly, it's been a while since I played Leo. I don't remember where all the counter bus problems occurred, but we do have counter chargers, so there is potential to, you know, mitigate everything, make sure that everything is still running smoothly, so forth and so forth. So I can see the mm -hmm. potential with this card. Fair enough. Yeah, simple straight forward. Time will tell when we test Leo and see how it does. Uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. Alex, what else we got? Yeah. Uh, we got... Uh, finished the uh, uh, Night Rose, and now we gotta finish Hari with the last two cards. Starting off with Dark Side Princess. Uh, it's a grade two. Auto at the end of the battle, this unit attacked. Uh, you may put this unit into your soul. Not GB, by the way. Um, auto generation break one when this unit is placed on rear guard from soul. If you have a grade three greater vanguard with Hari in his card name, this unit gets power plus 10,000 to the end of turn. If you have two or more face up cards in your G zone, it can get plus 15 instead. So you're telling me, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to stop myself there. <laughs> I like the contrast. Marauding Shade that we covered last week was a plus mm -hmm. five if you meet another condition plus 10. But the difference with Marauding Shade is the fact that it also was a 10k if you meet the condition 15k shield. For Dark Side mm -hmm. Princess, it's like, hey, I gained 10k. Oh, wait a minute. If I meet conditions, I gain 15k, which is technically more than Marauding Shade. But she doesn't have the uh, shield potential the Marauding Shade does. Exactly. So I feel like it's a ba balance. Plus this one in the early game. You can guard with uh, Marauding Shade in the early game with the shield values and stuff like that. This one says it can just tuck itself in the soul like on grade 2 turn, the rush. 
so which is just basically your soul. setup. Yeah. I like it. It's a simple beat stick, but uh, whenever you combine the power she gains with the crest power, those numbers kind of get some danger in them. Yeah, I mean, it's just a 30k normally on its own without like, on first turn. It's a 30k normally on its own, and then on second turn, let's you go into the Hari stride that we're going to cover. Uh, you're getting 10k from the crest, you're getting 10, 15k from herself. She just becomes a 30... Wait, something's wrong here. Math is not math. Is not mathing. Where'd you get 30 the first time? Uh, it says when this unit is placed by the ability of Vanguard with Hari. And it's good, right? If you oh, have a okay. Great, so sorry, you're, you're counting the oh. stride effect. So yes. If she's placed by stride effect on first turn, she's 30. On second turn, she's all the way up to 40. If she's placed by the Hari stride effect that we're going to cover right now, she's basically just a 35, which is still good. I was yes. gonna say, like, the, also, you're, you can do this in combo with the uh, Chimera in the early game, too, as your fourth attack. Yeah, but, it, 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 but it literally, as you just said... No, wait. Have if, you you, been, if you have a grade three, you're going to Vanguard with Hari. Why'd you say... Why'd you say that it has to be placed by Hari effect? No, no, I said if you played it by the Hari effect. His on stride is... Mm, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna roll get, back the clip for that one. I'm gonna roll back the clip for that one. Uh, it says when this unit is placed by the ability of Vanguard with Hari, and it's good, right? Did not. Nah. Say. <laughs> anyway, speaking of Dragon Masquerade Hari, simple, straightforward. The first stride ability is always the same with these. You have to discard a grade three card with Hari in its current name in order to stride it. And then there's also one simple ability, Magia. Auto Vanguard Generation Break 2. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, counter plus one, put two rear guards into your soul. Choose up to two cards with different card names from your soul, call them to rear guards, and uh, choose up to two of your opponent's rear guards, put them into soul. At the end of the turn, put those called units into soul. So, huzzah, another way to multi attack. So, if you have the CB for it, uh, this is technically a six attack deck. Yep. Also, this um, reading this card makes me appreciate how they worded paratrooper now. How so? Because now, you, because now you can suck up a booster and a front row rear guard. Call paratrooper to the back row when the rear guard is rested, and call the other front row dark side princess. Use paratrooper skill, suck up the rested rear guard, and call another dark side princess. So it's a way to get two units with the same name because this one has to be called different names. I feel like there's something wrong in that sentence. Oh, is oh is it bottom face? Oh, never I mind. feel I feel like there's they something wrong with that sentence, Alex, because Kira Pier yeah. Trooper says other than during battle phase. <sighs> they really did nerf the hell out of that card, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, because they didn't want to do that stupid bullshit you're just suggesting. I, I had hope the Bushy Road would really redeem that effect. And then, cool. yeah. all right, moving on. <laughs> Guitar, we need to make it balanced. Let premium break it because you got to understand. If I remember correctly, there's a premium stride that copies Magia abilities. So let premium break it. <laughs> Leave standard alone. <laughs> all right, I love the contrast that both Hari and Nightro Strides are having. They both basically do the exact same thing in the sense of Generation Break 2, Magia or Hollow. Uh, kill two things or put two things into soul and then call two things that have to be different names where if Night Rose it has to also be great to your greater Hari can call anything but and then Hari also sucks stif stuff up while Night Rose gains a crit in 10k so they gain different benefits but basically the same kind of card of uh, sacrifice two things call two new things go burr exactly I also like the fact that they balance them in the fact that Hari has an, uh, one extra attack versus Night Rose. But Night Rose also has an extra rear guard it can call for free without having to use his hand, where Hari still has to use a card from hand. So it balances out on, on paper when you look at it that way. Night Rose is a lot more defensive than Hari. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I loved, we recorded the video, but I love doing the whole combo of Marauding Shade being not only a good attacker. Dying because of hollow, milling two, putting back a trigger that I milled, and then calling Marauding Shade back as a 15k interceptor going, he's gonna do double double trouble. Double trouble. That's <laughs> just good. Uh, anyway, 
Well, all that being then, we have those tried decks that they're currently out in Japan. People are already cooking. A uh, video of that mm -hmm. should be coming out soon. It will be out of the box only. And then we will do proper upgrades of Hari and Nat Rose later down the road, fighting proper decks, yada, yada, yada. But before That's we get to that, Alex, I want your opinion on a common because it released and now my brain went, <sighs> wait a minute, this could potentially be stupid. This card is pretty pretty good, but only in one deck. Just, we got uh, Fanatic Garlic. Uh, it's a grade one uh, continuous rear guard during the battle this unit boosted a plant token this unit gains uh, 5k for each of your plant tokens so if you have a full board of plant tokens it becomes a 28k booster um auto backward rear guard when your plant token in the same column as this unit stands stand this unit so, so what's that one deck the only deck this really fits in would be claudine the promo for stoica because it wrong. restands your plant tokens you are definitely not wrong, and I do agree with you. However, because it's not super optimal, and people probably uh -huh. won't do it, I can see this being put in a plant deck go burr Vivace. Because yeah. Vivace stands plant tokens and gives them 5k. Guess what else is gonna stand? Yeah. And I then you have that, that nifty little order that says, hey, your grade zero 5Ks become 15Ks. So it's a 20K plant token boosted by a 28K. So it's a 48K column. Let's say let's say these little garlics are 23. So you have plant token front, plant token front, plant token behind Vanguard and two of these in the back. So you have yeah. two 23K boosters that are constantly boosting for 23 because they're going to be constantly restanding. And you don't have to worry about, you know, plant token generation. For, look at the base, how it plays now. By the time you get to turn three, you have like three or four plant tokens on board already. Well, yeah, I love your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> look, man, you, you had, you're over here like cooking and you're throwing in all these spices and you're like, oh, cool. Like chili powder. <laughs> Just Look, man, I want to try it. Spice. I want to try it out because well, the one thing about Leonorn is she's got a decent turn three now because of everything that's been get, she's been getting. The only problem with her turn four is that it's usually the cripple turn, not the kill turn, because you do gain yeah. decent amount of power, but not really that great power overall spread among all of your units. If you do this right, you could just have like five or six attacks that go punk, 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 punk. Exactly, but, <laughs> and but I'll, this is really funny in Claudine though, because Claudine did really dumb things with its plant tokens. So what you're telling me, me is we need to do a video where you build a Claudine deck around this card, and I build a vase deck around this card. Oh God! <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyway, I thought that this common wor was worth talking about because I do like the interesting wording of its effect. Uh, but uh. speaking of uh, interesting wordings of their effects, guess who's next? You got Eugene! Best deck! <laughs> uh, we got... I want to say two-thirds of Eugene Best deck and then one-third of... Let me copy your homework. Uh, you need to flip that around. It's probably more like 50-50. <laughs> we technically got three new cards that are good and two that are not. So it's like three out of five. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. We'll talk about we talk about the good we'll talk about the good first before we talk about the bad. Exactly. How about that? Uh, first, we got a grade one colorless strike. Uh, sorry, colored strike of dust storm colorless. It's colored, <laughs> but it's colorless. Jesus, nice the name. Uh, anyways, um, it's grade one auto when this unit is rode upon by roaring bullet of dust storm. Uh, Renaud. Uh, look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to one card with dust storm in its card name from among them. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck. I'm gonna talk about the ability real quick in a second. Um. What was it last time we had? We had the staple dragon dragon 
Not too long ago, we read a card that had something else, something <laughs> else. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> and now you're telling me we got color, color? Colored, c colored, colorless. I need to meet whoever is in charge of naming <laughs> these damn cards. I need to shake that person's hand. <laughs> I need to just go, you're doing a great job. I can see the creativity well drying up, but you're still doing a great job. Dude, like the name of itself is a contradiction is the funniest part about this. Anyway, the effect though is honestly comparatively what Eugene has gotten as it's yes. third grade one ride line, not bad. Yeah, it honestly is good because it says a card. So in the future, if we get a dust storm order for some reason, we can technically search it, but it can also music to search your persona rides. So I am very intrigued, which I my intrigue kind of got answered a second. I said it out loud and thought about it, but they went for the keyword dust storm, which does Eugene does have a lot of cards that are very good for Eugene that are called dust storm or have dust storm mm -hmm. in their card name specifically. But for a second there, I was honestly shocked that it didn't say drag Ritter until my brain went one, two, three and said, I guess drag Ritter transitioned to Gandiva more now than Eugene. Yeah. So how's that? Yeah, anyway. it's pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got more dust storms. Well, one of them being the ride line grade two, Roaring Bullet of Dust Storm Renaud. or Ronald, whatever. Uh, it's a grade two ride line that says auto when this unit is, when this unit rode upon by grade three card with Eugene in its card name, Energy Blast three draw two cards. Choose a card from your hand and put it into Soul. And an auto vanguard rearguard when this unit attacks. If your opponent has two or less rearguards, this unit gets power 5k until the end of turn. So mm. the rearguard vanguard effect is nice being a 15k attacker. Most likely you're never going to be using it on rearguard. Let's be honest here. Nope. I do really like the first effect of going draw two, put one card from your hand into soul because it's just like more filter, give me more chances to see my pieces. Hey, barrel players. This is how your grid two should be worded. The, Look, the, man, card, don't throw salt. Card, the card shouldn't be the, the card going into soul shouldn't have been the cost. It should have been something like this draw two, and then you get the pick a card. Because okay. I'm pretty sure the old ride line put it for the cost first. Look, man, all right. I know a lot of bear players would love this card that can just draw two, see a pony, put the pony into soul, and start uh, gassing. But, um, you know. I don't want to throw shade, but the next, after the Eugene, the next two cards are going to explain basically why Bear also got the shaft. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, take, 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 take away the big boy. You got a double rare Eugene with the name Inferno of Dust Storm Eugene. Uh, its effect is continuous. It is regarded as heavy artillery of Dust Storm Eugene. Huzzah, all of your old support works. Um, act Vanguard once per turn. Cost uh, rest two rear guards. Choose a column and retire all rear, your opponent's rear guards in that column. So that's a lot, a bit, definitely a better upgrade. Uh, auto Vanguard once per turn. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, cost Counter Blast one, Soul Blast one. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to two grade two or less units. Sorry, two grade three or less units from a mountain those cards and call them to rear guard and then with in the same column and shuffle your deck. And this unit gains power plus five until the end of turn. If your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater and your opponent has three or more open rear guard circles, all of those units called by this ability gain power plus five. So verdict. This is good. It's a really good card. It's definitely worth an upgrade. It's not flashy and amazing but in all fairness eugene didn't need anything flashy or amazing uh eugene's support was already really good it just needed a decent vanguard and we got a decent vanguard it kept its whole mechanic of resting two rear guards so nothing changes there but now instead of gaining 10k and retiring one thing it retires a column which honestly in my opinion is better like we're, we're gonna miss the extra power on the vanguard which was nice but being able to just get rid of two with one effect helps the whole deck out whenever you re you are trying to board wipe your opponent. Yeah. 
And the good thing about the second effect is it's not tied to your opponent being great, what a great, a specific grade. And it's also not tied to your opponent, you having to retire an opponent's rear guard to activate. Which mm-hmm. means if your opponent leaves you no board, at least you're gaining the power on your vanguard and you're going two cards. Not to mention, the only thing that is restricted if active upon gain, being grade three and your rear guard's called gain 5k power. Other than that, Eugene's still swinging 18k and giving you four attacks. Yeah, exactly. I, I overall like it. Now, best practice for Eugene is to have a deck build where whatever column or rear guard you swing with can get rid of themselves so you're not overcalling units because overcalling mm-hmm. units always feels like a minus yeah especially so, so, if you have uh nothing that like really uh does anything on rear guard during that turn exactly so one card that we can probably both agree with that will fit really nicely in here is shinry exactly and also, uh, his own support card we got in the last wave of his support, uh, Clifton. Mm-hmm. Uh, was also really good, too, because it countercharges by retiring itself. It also is a decent booster beat stick. Exactly. So overall, he's got support, um, not to mention DZ set one gave him a card that can restain rear guards. So he's got even more access to multi-attacks. And I, <laughs> I love the combo with that specific restander because you can call it from hand during main phase activate the energy blast ability your opponent doesn't have a front row so whenever your vanguard attacks you can choose to one of your front row rear guards and restand it mm-hmm. when your vanguard attacks cannabis won't look at top five. Oh, look another one call it to rear guard shuffle deck energy blast draw a card give the same effect again Mm-hmm. But you don't have to activate it in the same instance because it's an end of battle attack. It's an end of battle skill, so we'll see the end of battle of that attack. If you have something like Oswald in the back row and restand Eugene, you can just go swing with Eugene again and at the end of that battle, restand the rear guard again. Yeah. But this time, that rear guard might have crits from the first drive check. <laughs> exactly. There's potential. There's so much potential with a new Eugene. And as any new upgrade ride line, whatever you want to call it, it also got more than just its ride line of support cards. Well, technically but it there, didn't, but... It didn't, but it did. <laughs> First one we're going to be talking about is Bullet Final of Dust Storm Hellenus. It's a grade one common... That says at the beginning of your battle phase, if your opponent has one or less rear guards, stand this unit. And then continuous guardian circle. If you have a Vanguard Dust Torrent card named, this unit gets shield 5k, make it 10k shield. I'm pretty sure we had a very similar, if not exact, same card already. But if we oh, have Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see if I have it in my binder real quick. Because <laughs> I, I want to say I remember from recent sets getting a car that had the same type of be, uh, beginning of battle phase stand but i think that one gained 5k power not 5k shield so so i think we have this card i don't know if yeah i think that's the one i was talking about uh it is auto rear guard once per turn when your opponent's rear guard is retired during your main phase if you have a great three or greater vanguard with eugenia's card name stand this unit and it gains 5k and then continuous in Guardian Circle, if you have a grade three greater Vanguard with Eugene in this card name, you get Shield plus five. So it's so, essentially so, the same card. So this is just a watered down version of a double rare. Yeah, the, the double rare we got in D, uh, is this the easy one? This is yeah, the easy one. one. Yeah. <sighs> Alex, read the next card. Uh, Next is a new Dust Storm unit. Uh, brilliant dust, uh, Bullet of Dust Storm Ragnet. It is a rare. Its ability is auto rear guard. Uh, if you have a great three or greater Vanguard with Eugene in this card name, cost Soul Blast one, rest this unit, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. And then auto rear guard at the beginning of the battle fi- or battle phase. If your opponent has one or less rear guards, stand this unit and it gains power plus five. Philip, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to uh, starting to get some deja vu. 
Yeah. Some of you that have heard that effect or read that effect or have even followed me on social media and yeah, stuff like that, probably know where this fucking is going. It's <sighs> literally the great two from set one or two from Divi- uh, I'm, I'm finding two. Yeah. For Eugene, it's the the weird uh brachio or dinosaur that we got that did almost actually i think literally no the exact no same no thing. no 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 not almost not even almost not even close almost <laughs> the only difference i repeat the only dare to fucker is i'm gonna show you okay. the only difference between <laughs> this card and the new card we got is the fact that this one not even kidding the only difference this card says if heavy artillery of the storm eugene that's it <laughs> that is the only difference well no no there is one more difference philip i swear to god if you say in its card name is also in the text i'm gonna fucking smack no. you no 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 it is a dust storm unit so it is searchable mm. with the red line That is literally the only difference. Oh yeah, it's a waifu skin. There you go. It's the waifu skin. On top Harbor of the still card. doesn't taste good. <laughs> <laughs> See, so Eugene got a really good blow up, but boy, did his support not. <laughs> See, I can't even say I get it. The only thing I can think the reason for this card being made the reason for the previous card we talked about being made is to give them the dust storm name alex you still have the double rare near you right yeah does it have the dust storm name all right hold your pillow phil it's springing bullet of dust storm killing this so there's even less reason there's even see any argument my brain can think of to give them the benefit of doubt is going out the window uh, they gave him the dust storm name. Sure, applies to the grade two, doesn't apply to the grade one. They wanted to add cars that you can build a Eugene deck from this set only. See, that would make sense for the quote unquote new series of DZ cards so that people don't have to b- uh, buy overdress cards. But then you got that double rare that's saying, no, nah, wait a minute. <laughs> we got this in set one. Like yeah. any argument my brain is making is not is not following through the gears are gears are not turning <laughs> they're just like, stuck <laughs> like i'm sorry there's no other way to say it than this is lazy car design this is let yeah. me copy your homework and let's hope it gets a passing grade you know the worst part about this is we've recorded this game already um philip helped me make this deck and Philip can probably agree with me with if they ever if they would have made one of these cards, this rare for instance, a card that says at the end of the battle, uh counter blast one, put this unit into your soul, and uh retire rear guard. It would have been miles better because that's something the deck really needed. Like an like an inlet pulse that retired something. Oh, do you one better? What the effect could have been whatever. The effect could have been anything that was niche. The only thing that it needed to have to follow the suit of the new Eugene and what it wants to do is just have anywhere in its effect, the cause, the end of the ability, the condition, the mandatory effect, whatever, get rid of it off of rear guard. Exactly. That is literally the only requirement any Eugene support card should have had is make me go away from rear guard so that when you do attack with my new boss man, you call over an empty circle and you know you actually play properly and don't mind you know this. What else, you know what else would have been better? Mm-hmm. Because Eugene looks at the top five and calls a unit. If it was an on place, because at least then in the battle phase, you can get more retires. I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately having a a bit of a too big of a problem, but still a problem with just why is it a word for word exact copy of the other card? Like we've had cards that have basically the same effects. Like 
I can't even count how many gain 5k on boost grade ones we have in the game, but at least all of them have different conditions to gain the 5k. Mm. And we've had some effects, it's shared effects, but word for word? Really? Mm -hmm. And literally, this one would have been word for word other than it losing 5k power. What do you mean losing 5k power? There's uh, the new the new one doesn't gain the 5k power when it stands. This one keeps it. That literally is the only difference between the two card decks of these the other grade the other card. Oh yeah yeah you're talking about the guard circle one. The guard circle one. Yeah. yeah. The guard circle one I can at least give it a little bit of a pass. The double where it gains 5k power. The this common doesn't. The grade two. The name's the only thing different. And that is, again, that's not even a good argument because they put the thing that the new Eugene can be counted as the old Eugene. Mm -hmm. So even changing and just the same the, rarity too. Yeah. And they even made, you know, what was the, you know what was the biggest salt in the wounds? What's that? They made promos, promo reprints of the fucking dinosaur in question. Yeah, they did actually. <laughs> They actually did reprint that recently as a promo. Are you fucking kidding me here? Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, I want to move on before I grow any more gray hairs from this. Yep. Uh, we got one more car to cover this week. It's still in Dragon Empire, but it's for uh, the Eugene replacement. The actual Eugene 2.0. Uh, and even <laughs> look man the disrespect eugene has gotten is like un infixable like we were so excited <laughs> for eugene well, I, eugene himself well, it was good his support was bad alex we were so excited for the new eugene when mm -hmm. it got announced and then everybody was slightly crushed there was a double rare and then we saw the effect and was like all right this is an upgrade and then we saw the new support cards to go with, and it's like, cool, we're only running the ride line. Yeah. I broke a pencil. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> as I was saying, Gendiva support. We have Drag Raider Nami. It's a grade one double rear that says, when this unit is placed on rear guard, if you have a Vanguard Scarlet Flame in its card name, Soul Blast one, like the top seven cards of your deck, choose up to one grade three card without regular please from among them. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle the deck. If you reveal the card, choose a card from your hand and bind it face down. And then it also has auto back row rear guard once per turn when your other unit is placed on rear guard during your battle phase, or when your unit in the same column as this unit stands during your battle phase. If you have a Vanguard Scarlet Flame in its card name, you may stand this unit. If you do, at the end of that turn, put this unit into your soul. Now, this is how you do support. It's not yeah. super amazing, but this is definitely a card that I can see Gandiva players being ran. You know why? Uh, because this card can make boards unironically with other cards. Exactly. It's an early game card, which means it can be played anytime because your whole ride line is Scarlet Flame. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I'm pretty sure. Uh... It searches only for grade three cards without regular speed in them. But the grade three cards without regular speed in them in Gandiva are personalized for obvious reason. You're probably at this current moment best grade three that not only binds during attack and retires during attack, but also counts mm -hmm. as every other grade. So finding that potentially for an attacker or just doing more stuff is always good. I can find mm -hmm. the one of restricted card that you would really like to play to kind of start accelerating or, or, best or <laughs> exactly best harvest yeah and the funniest part about this card is the fact that if you meet the condition right it goes into your soul which normally some people would say is a downside right but then you got you got to remember that we got a really nifty dual nation called ford and Revertus, mm -hmm. that on place you can pull something from your soul so you can pull this back out oh look it's not placed from hand Proc a skill again, look at the top <laughs> seven cards at a grade three. Oh, look, here's another piece I needed to call down the rear guard. Here's a board from one card. 
This is a really cool card. It doesn't bring Gandiva, but I do think it just presents Gandiva with more consistency. More consistency and maybe a little bit more power because now it can reuse its boosters. Pretty much. Like, hey, 8k can potentially matter. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, potentially, Gandiva, depending on how things went, usually just swung with front row without boosters because it had, like, front, uh, front row was gaining power. But on those first few turns, if you couldn't manage to get to five, they were gaining, like, six and eights. Which are fine numbers, like a great two uh, swinging for, let's say, uh, 16, potentially 18, is not a bad number. But if it can swing for a potential 26, 28, or anything else, it's like, hey, this is uh, this is a lot better already. Also, you know what else is really good for? Uh, mm -hmm. What was the people's complaint about why the gray three that got restricted was good? It accelerated Eugene a little bit, uh, Eugene, Gandiva a little bit too fast. Mm -hmm. But why? Because it was a soul blast versus the counter blast in the deck, correct? Oh, uh, look, another way to bind cards. Yeah, this is another way to bind cards, and it's not using a counter blast as a soul blast, just like the grade three. I can't wait to see it be used. Anyway, speaking yeah. of cards getting to use, that's been it for this week's leaks. As for next week, we got some goodies because we're going to be seeing on Tuesday stream. Divine Z season nine, uh, season two, episode nine recap and ten. Where spoiler alert, um, a lot of shit happened. Dude, like this whole anime had an Attack on Titan plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But next to all those recaps, we are going to be seeing three Impaldio support cards. So that's going to be mm -hmm. very interesting to see what the new Destin ones are going to be getting in set five. We're going to get a little bit of a baseline of what kind of support those decks are going to be getting. What's going to basically finish them off. Because th honestly, set five is going to be the set that kind of, you know, set four started the book. Set five is going to end the book. Yeah. I will say that I am excited for the live just support because mm -hmm. I'm crossing my fingers that there's some form of early game in the future. Dude, I'm a little bit scared to see what um, Aqualibra support's gonna look like. I'm scared to see what they've revealed that the hit tease they gave in the anime, what we're that's gonna do. So much to do. Like, they've been really secret about set five, and a part of me likes that. A part of me is just scared still. Yeah. And then I forgot to put this up for you can see Thursday stream, we're getting. Fashionable Witches Love and Berry Collab Cards. And they're both in Ketter. Mm-hmm. Hey Hector. Um, <laughs> why why you gotta why you gotta why you gotta torture the man? He wanted more uh, Ketter ride lines. Here you go. Are these ride lines? Has this been confirmed? They're great zeros. It's gonna be fun. I, I can't wait to see what this is in store. It's always interesting to see these collab nations uh, or collab decks, technically not a nation, uh, come out. Uh, mm -hmm. But only Thursday will tell. So exactly, we're gonna be looking forward to that. Speaking of another news, though, uh, moving on, we got a little bit more information or confirmation on Deer Days, and that is the fact that we have a f official confirmation that the full game, official, just game, no extra DLC, nothing, just base game will include everything from Overdress and then everything in Divine Z up to Lyrical Set 1, including also all four Stride Deck sets, not including Hari and Night Rose. Mm -hmm. So we kind of already knew this slash speculated it, but it's nice to have official confirmation on those points. Is so it? people are going to be able to play Shoujo Doji straight out of their days when it comes up. And sure enough. And sure enough. Look, man, I'll be happy with my absolute zero and other stuff. Mm. Uh, speaking of other changes, as we already seen, but now more confirmation, we are getting a 50 card base deck and energy generator added into the game. May would make sense. Otherwise, you know, a lot of these cards would not be, be able to be used. Yes. I will say the new UI for uh, the deck, deck maker is very masterful looking. I don't like it. I legitimately don't like it. It's it feels a little bit 2000 y for me. And I am saying this from a perspective of a graphic designer. Mm. Like, I feel like 
they could have done a better job making it a little bit more modern. Mm -hmm. It it looks a bit too much like all over the place. Like like one main rule of graphic design whenever you're making stuff, be it graphics, be it billboards, be it flyers, be it advertisements, yada yada yada, is mm -hmm. to try to limit yourself to as little fonts as possible. Just looking at this UI, I I'm starting to lose count on two hands how many mm -hmm. fonts they used. I will say that I'm glad they did change the deck maker because uh, whenever I play Deer Days and I'm sitting here like, oh, I really need to find a specific grade one. Uh, outside of using the filters and everything like that, like when you were just scrolling, 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 scrolling through this little carousel, yeah. I'd rather just have a list. <laughs> I'd rather just have a list agree. of cards. It's definitely an upgrade. I just don't like the design. Yeah. Anyway. And then last but not least, also kind of speculated, but definitely confirmed now, is the fact that with the new changes of rulings in the physical game, the same thing will apply in Deer Days. It's still rock, paper, scissors to decide, but whoever wins that will get to choose going first or second. Exactly. Huzzah. Anyway, uh, with all of that, though, being said, that actually is everything. Like, we got nothing else to yep. talk about. Nothing else really interesting happened this week. Just Philip having a mini stroke over a rant of cards. <laughs> Look, man, Eugene is one of those decks. It's fun to play, and everybody was I sad. Exactly, and everybody said that it I never got the support that it deserved. So when we finally yeah. saw a new Eugene Vanguard. Everybody was excited, but I really think they dropped the ball a little bit. Like they did really good on the Eugene and the ride line, mm -hmm. but I, 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 I feel like everything else was uh, unfortunately a fail. Here's the best way of explaining this. So at my shop, I always simped of every time we get a Eugene support card, we're going to get a new Eugene. We're going to get a new Eugene. And people in my locals are like, I'm the crazy Eugene guy. Oh, God, here he goes again. Talking about getting a new Eugene. He's, like, he's going to be wrong again. And then I finally got it. And then even the people at my card shop are like, yeah, they did you dirty. They gave you a new Van card, but that was it. <laughs> <sighs> it is what it is. Like, not everybody... Can get the love. Not everybody apparently deserves the love, but we're going to end this episode on that note. Thank you everybody so much for watching episode 232 of Eat Time. If you love this episode, please like, share it with your friends, comment down below what you thought of the new Eugene. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't wait to read those rants. But if you like what we do here, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell to get not notified, maybe become a member of some awesome perks like screaming in my ear while I'm trying to talk. <laughs> Does help because we get some information that we didn't know, but damn, yeah. it's going to be fun in editing. Anyway, with all that being said, I've been Philip. This is Alex. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Woo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who else from the original era has not gotten an upgraded Vanguard? Flagberg. Man, I really hope they do Flagberg good at least. <laughs> Dude.